I'm an evolving young human. And I remember getting Baldwin was one of the first times in which I felt like I had gotten new tools to be able to verbalize how I felt. The power of a good book can really change your life. This is Bookshook. The book that I'm choosing to talk about today, which is one of my all-time favorites, is The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. It came out in 1963, which, fun fact, is uh, my first tattoo. And the reason why 1963 means so much to me is that it was a pivotal year in the civil rights movement. There were many people working towards impactful collective action, fighting for a future that they really weren't guaranteed, but still really deemed as essential. And I view Baldwin's work in The Fire Next Time as a pivotal moment in that year. Even if you dive into Baldwin's life, he is somebody who took pride in his community, felt connected to the other authors, speakers, writers, activists of his time. And so part of the gift of Baldwin for me is that he was the entryway to learning so much more about the other pivotal figures, the other influential figures in the movement. I remember the first chapter, so to speak, is a letter to his nephew was also named James. And there's something so intimate about that moment, reading this book that is very much an essay on the state of America and the state of black people in America. But starting with such a personal touch point for me was really an approach to this conversation that I hadn't seen before, especially being a freshman or being a sophomore in high school in which a lot of the texts that I had read on race, I think, were very, um, I'm, I'm trying to find the right word just very clinical. I think they lacked that personal experience because oftentimes in schools it's taught as history or something of the past versus something that people experienced and continue to experience. And so Baldwin being able to talk about, one, the history of how racism has become so entrenched in our systems, but two, talk about the role of dominant culture, talk about the role of white America and uh, the ways in which infrastructures allow for their continued ignorance. Um, and he writes about it in such a poetic way. And so those are the couple things that I, I feel like really resonate to me about The Fire Next Time. Why I recommend reading it, especially for people's touch point, if you're trying to understand what's happening right now, not only is it just a great history lesson, it also makes it a personal conversation. You can't help but to recognize the fact that we're talking about people's lives. You can't dismiss that. He doesn't allow you to dismiss that. He doesn't allow you to dismiss that you're a part of this conversation. And so to be able to do that just in reading pages in which you're not even in conversation with him, but it feels like you are, is really powerful because it is hard to read something that can be um, so devastating and so sad and feel motivated by it. So this was my first copy. I think I have five copies, three of which are heavily annotated. It's always been one of my favorite books. I don't know how many times I talk to friends about um, convincing them to read it. <laughs> the reason why I always recommend it is because it is an adept illustration and understanding of exactly what we're going through right now. Do I really want to be integrated into a burning house? If people follow me, they know that the one thing that I've said on my, my social pages is we don't integrate, we recreate. And it comes from reading this line. I view it as a call to action, especially for the creative people. I know everyone has a different role in progress and in this movement, um, but it speaks to the importance of imagination because we are tasked with having to reimagine things. It's not a matter of fighting to merely be included, but we're fighting for systems that include us on the most foundational level. I look at this line even in terms of this conversation that we're having in literally every industry, but it requires that behind the scenes change that may not always be evident. It's building a new infrastructure to a house, basically. Baldwin for me is not only a reminder of the progress that's been made prior to me being on this planet, He's also a reminder whenever I read him of the importance to committing to making progress. This book for me has not only been 
really comforting because in a world where it's easy to feel overwhelmed and lost in this, I, I feel like this book has always grounded me in understanding why we continue to fight for progress even when it feels like um, nothing will change. I don't feel as lost, but I really feel grounded in um, my own purpose. And then I also use it as, I, I feel like it's a tool. It's crazy to be able to be like, I turned to this for comfort, but I also utilize this for progress, to be able to articulate how I feel. I utilize this to try and figure out what conversations I can be having, what actions I can be taking. So this book has really had a ripple effect uh, on my life, as I know so many other people's lives too. So I can't see not reading this. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe here or here or here, like somewhere in this area, anywhere over there.